Back in late 2010, Nissan brought the LEAF to the world. L-E-A-F, leading environmentally friendly, affordable family car. And it was all of those things, reasonably affordable. It could seat five, it even could take three child seats in the back. And I know because I tried it. And since that point, more than 300,000 Leafs, based on that first generation model, have been sold around the world. I've owned two of them. But now it's time for the second generation Leaf, the 2018 Leaf, which was unveiled today in Tokyo. Inside the new Nissan Leaf, there are some changes that you'll either be grateful to see or you won't be grateful to see. The door is very much like the first generation Leaf. In fact, you could probably blindfold me, put me in this car, and then just tell me to look at the door and I'd think this was actually the first generation car. Same goes for the second row of seats here. Inside though, you've got this very interesting two-tone motif that you see from outside. You've got the two-tone roof. Inside here, you've got two-tone interior. You've got this leather or, or um, fake leather, I'm not sure which, and then you've got a suede accent line. But then actually inside, you're doing away with the original large center touchscreen display. You're replacing that with a more of a floating display idea, which does work with Android Auto and CarPlay. And as somebody who's a recent convert to Android Auto, I say yay. Because honestly, that's the way of ensuring that your navigation systems and all the apps you need are within easy reach. Now, the other thing that you'll notice about this car is that there's a new kind of semi-flying buttress thing going on in the center console between the driver and the passenger. The gear selector is pretty much in the same position as it used to be, but the cup holders, instead of being forward of that, are now behind it in front of the armrest. And the armrest is also slightly different in its shape to make space for those cup holders. You've also got some new buttons, uh, locations for the eco and the self park features. And the heated seat buttons are right up underneath the heater controls, which ties it all nicely together with a neat little bow. If you sit in the driver's seat of the new Nissan Leaf, you'll of course notice some significant changes compared to the previous generation car. First off is the steering wheel, which has been completely revamped for this model year. You've got this nice flattened off base, and in this particular model, it's leather wrapped with some beautiful contrast stitching. But most important is the change of the button controls on the steering wheel. You've now got two main areas on the steering wheel with quadrants of buttons in them. Uh, you've got plenty of very clear indication as to what they do. Volume up, volume down. You've got your track forward and track back. You've got your repeat button and then you've got your cruise control buttons on the right hand side. Now, I'm assuming in European markets, you'll also get a speed limiter as you did with the previous generation Nissan Leaf. Now, instead of the digital speedometer of the original Nissan Leaf, we now have an analog speedometer in the new Leaf as well as a seven inch digital display that displays all the information relating to your car's battery, its state of charge, uh, navigation, and also the advanced autonomous uh, features or the uh, advanced autonomous driver assistance features that you'll see in terms of ProPilot. Now I should note here, ProPilot is an optional extra on this car. It doesn't come as standard on any of the models. So you will have to pay a premium. How much of a premium? I'm not entirely sure yet. I expect to get that information shortly. One other thing that you'll notice about the new Nissan Leaf is some styling changes at the back. Gone are those big boomerang LED headlights that we saw in the first generation car and in its place, these stylish little numbers. Now, there is one thing that I've noticed about the boot of this car, if I can find the switch, and that is it's still got that annoying Bose amplifier at the front end of the boot space or trunk if you're in America. Now, why do I have a problem with this? Well, it's one of practicality. 
Well, a lot of people do like showing off the fact that they have a premium Bose stereo system in their car, which, by the way, comes on the higher level trim models. It kind of gets in the way if you want your, your load bay area to be one that's very practical. I say this as someone with a Nissan Leaf with a Bose premium stereo system in. You get little bits of dirt that get caught up in the grooves of the Bose stereo unit. And it also makes filling that load bay up a little bit more cumbersome if you don't want to put anything on top of the amplifier. The seats do flip forward as they did in the previous generation Leaf. It's even got the same tab which gives the same issue that we had with the first generation Leaf. Namely, there's no flat load bay floor. So under the hood, there's not a lot to see like the previous generation Nissan Leaf. You've still got the 12 volt starter battery, which of course, all it does is engage the relays for the main power systems. Then you've got the motor with the integrated charging electronics and inverter mounted on the top. Now, this looks smaller in physical size than the motor and inverter package on the first generation Leaf. It fits rather nicely under the hood. And you also notice that the radiators are actually quite a way back underneath the bonnet of the car. The radiators actually sit here, meaning that front part is all for the sensors and of course the crumple zone. Now, talking of sensors, this car is fully loaded with sensors, at least on the higher end model. It's got ultrasonic sensors front and rear, and those are to help it with the forward collision assist, rear traffic alert, and a feature that allows the car to detect if you've pressed the wrong pedal by mistake. Yes, I did just say that. Instead of stepping on the stop pedal, you accidentally step on the go pedal. This car will tell and stop and keep you safe. Now, why is that an issue? Well, in Japan, like the rest of the world, we've got an aging population. And as you get older and a little bit less sharp, it's more likely that you'll accidentally step on the wrong pedal. And we've seen plenty of times what happens when you do that. The Toyota Prius unintended acceleration cases and the incidences where people have stepped on what they thought was the brake of their Tesla Model S only to put it through a shop front. This is all a mistake that's begging to be stopped and Nissan reckons it's figured out a way of doing that. The sensors detect when there's something in front of you and if you step on the go pedal when you should step on the stop, it stops the car for you. Now, when it comes to range for the new 2018 Nissan LEAF, there are no official test results yet. But Nissan says, based on the JC08 test cycle, this car will do 400 kilometers per charge. Unfortunately, the Japanese test cycle is notoriously optimistic. And so a real world range is going to be substantially less. This car does have a 40 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, however, so we should be able to see a real world range of between 150 and 160 miles per charge. That's pretty much it. This is the new Nissan Leaf. It's lower down, wider, sleeker. It's more sporty. It's got a slightly larger load bay, even if the dimensions have been changed to make it more sleek and low and sporty. Uh, it's got the same charging capabilities. It's more powerful. It's got uh, Leaf to home capabilities. If you've got Leaf to home in your house, which unless you're in Japan, you won't have. It's got vehicle to grid capabilities. It's got Android Auto. It's got Apple CarPlay, at least on the higher end models and it's much more conventional looking in its appearance. And that should earn Nissan some more buyers, at least in most car markets. Will it compete against the Tesla Model 3? No, it's not supposed to. Will it compete against the Chevrolet Bolt EV? No, it's not supposed to. Next year, when we get a sportier, longer range version, it might do. But for a starting price of $29,900 in the US, it's going to be quite an interesting car. I can't wait to test drive it, but until then, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show. And if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, don't forget you can donate at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. I've left a link in the description below and there'll be a clickable one at the end of this video. Until next time, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Thanks for joining me and keep evolving. evolving.